Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our AM um, and PB joint webinar. Um, there's a few people still joining, so I'm going to just give it a few more seconds. Um, but I'm Georgia, I'm editor of Aesthetic Medicine, and I'm joined this morning by Renee Lapino. Hi, Renee. Good morning. Um, so Renee is a medical facialist, founder of Renee Lapino Clinic, and she is known as the London Skin Guru. Um, so Renee is a registered nurse in the US. Um, and in the UK, she knows all about skin, all about devices, all about um, treating and helping to remodel the skin, which is what we're going to be talking more specifically about today, um, because we're going to be focusing on combined radio frequency and microneedling devices and treatments in clinic. Um, so yeah, just as a few more people join, um, Renee, so actually what we're going to do, so um, a little bit different this time, so me and Renee are going to just have like a little bit of a Q&A chat, um, and then at the end, if anyone has any questions as we go through, if you just pop them in the chat box, and then at the end we'll go through and I will put your questions to Renee. Um, so yeah, just as a few more people are joining, do you want to just give us a little bit of a, um, more of a background about what it is that you, you focus on and specialise in in clinic? Yeah, definitely. So all of our, I've just opened my second location in Belgravia. So my first location is in Kensington. So all of my patients are very demanding, but they can't afford to have a lot of downtime. They want massive results. So all of our treatments in clinic are results driven, but basically designed to give you as minimal downtime as possible. So like everything includes anti-inflammatory products and LED is a part of every single treatment, but we use a lot of combination protocols. So you don't come in, if you're having like skin pen, for example, you want to come in, be cleansed, numbed, do the skin pen and then cleansed again and SPF and sent on your way. We would do LED light at the beginning while you're numbing to boost the blood flow. We would use serums and mesotherapy infusions after the needling. We would do like a biocellulose laser mask and more LED. So everything is very inclusive and also um, just combined to give everyone the best treatment for them. And it's everything is bespoke as well. So we do not have set protocols that my team follow. All of my team have 10 years or more experience on the face and they design each patient's treatment for the patient while they're laying on the bed. So not everyone is a good candidate for vitamin C. Not everyone is a good candidate for retinol. So everything is on the trolley laid out and each treatment is designed for that patient's skin. So that's our focus. I think that was what makes us a little bit different. And we approach the body as a whole. So we ask the patient about their overall health, about their life, style about how they eat do they smoke and we don't try to make the patient change those things we try to work around those things and give them the best results possible if they are a smoker us telling them off isn't going to make them stop smoking yeah. so how do we support their skin while they're still having a cheeky cigarette every afternoon type of a thing so we've just added in a new body room so we have multiple face rooms and now we have a new body room so we're just kind of trying to expand that holistic approach into body treatments as well so it's going to be a lot fun this year yeah it sounds like it and I think the the holistic approach really um feeds itself into kind of combined treatments and more devices that we're seeing now which do combine kind of different technologies um yeah. so that brings us nicely on to combined radio frequency and microneedling devices um we're kind of I know you know this isn't as a combined approach isn't perhaps totally new in itself but I think there is a trend for it at the moment um so what is the premise behind combined combining RF and microneedling? Like when, if you were to deliver those technologies separately versus combined together in a device, like what's the difference? Okay, so we have done that a lot in clinic where we've done the topical radio frequency and we have the new era and then we use the skin pen to do microneedling. And what's great is you know that when you have microneedling, you're inducing fibroblast activity, which induces collagen and you're breaking down the damage. So in large pores, scarring, laxity, you're going to reverse all of that. And then the radio frequency as well is going to stimulate collagen production. It's going to boost blood flow, lymphatic drainage. So give you like a healthy glow as well as more collagen 
itself. So between the two of them, you're looking at new collagen, you're looking at tightness, you're reducing scarring, improving the skin texture and tone, reducing laxity. But when you use them in one device together, you're getting the results from the microneedling on the surface of the skin. So you're able to break down scarring, you're able to break down enlarged pores, smooth out fine lines and wrinkles, but then you're putting the radio frequency inside the skin. So you're able to tighten and stimulate that collagen deeper inside the skin than you would ever reach from approaching at a topical point of view. And mm -hmm. also when you approach topically, you don't get a full 100% of that radio wave, 3.5 millimeters inside the skin like you do with the radio frequency on the secret on the smaller areas. So my body device with the radio frequency, I can treat up to four millimeters deep how, or four centimeters deep rather, but I can't use that handpiece on the face. So on the face, I can't go more than half a centimeter. Whereas with this device, I can go 3.5 millimeters down into the skin to boost new healthy collagen and tightening and lifting. So we're seeing a big increase in the lifting of the jaw and in the contour of the cheekbone because the radio frequency is inside working its magic. Mm. And who, who is the ideal patient for the device? Would you say this is something that's suitable for treating like pretty much all anti-aging concerns or aging concerns? Or is there something really specific indications that it's, that it's really good for? It basically can treat across the board. It can treat anyone who is, I normally won't treat with this type of device below the age of 25 unless they have some serious scarring. I would normally like grab a skin pen first and try to break down that scarring. And then if we need to fill in, if they have like ice pick scarring, we may try to use this to fill it in. But that would be kind of a niche indication. Yeah. Normally I'd say between the ages of 25 to 32 is when you'll have your first one to just continue your collagen production, tighten and lift. But it's great for aging concerns for women past their 30s and their 40s, 50s, 60s. We've seen results in people in their 60s within just a week or so. So it is great for all aging concerns for you to just kind of turn back the clock and give yourself that lift and the contour jawline that everyone's worried about that a lot of people don't want injectables. They don't want calcium they don't want filler and that's actually interesting I think um, throughout lockdown and with everyone doing lots of zoom calls and webinars and like this I've been hearing a lot of feedback from practitioners that the demand for jawline tightening and kind of lifting and like jowl treatment especially has gone through the roof yeah, because we'll also, we don't look at ourselves like this normally, but when everyone's like sitting there looking at their computer, they're like, they're noticing this needs to be tighter. That's not even an angle that no one would, that anyone would ever look at someone yeah. else in, but it makes you suddenly self-conscious of it. So I think a lot of people, yeah, everyone that's coming in for consultations now is asking about the jaw and they want the jaw to be tighter and more lifted and more defined. As young as like 25, 26 years old, people are like, oh, I want more of a contour. So it it is not just a traditional aging treatment. It's great for all approaches. Yeah. And so on the, obviously all devices will be a little bit different, but you use Kutera Secret RF. Yes. So in terms of, I know the needle depth can be adjusted. How do you approach each treatment in terms of that? Like how deep you're going to go and why? So we have scientific studies that show us that like everyone that uses the device is trained on, but anyone who's studied the skin will know as well how deep the collagen is, where the dermal epidermal junction is, with the fat pad, how deep you should go to boost collagen. So we're going to go a lot deeper on the lower face, on the jawline. We're going to treat anything from 1.2 to 3.5 in the lower face, the cheek and the jawline. And then on the forehead, we'll treat it like 0.8 millimeter to 0.5 millimeter. So everything is, again, completely personalized when you have the treatment. You're able to completely adjust it, but not only are you able to adjust the needle depth, you're also able to adjust the radio frequency wavelength Mm -hmm. as well as the percentage of intensity that that radio wavelength delivers at so that you're able to specifically target if they're older and you really want to go really strong and aggressive, you're going to numb them for a little bit longer. The results are going to take a little bit longer, but you can increase that intensity to give them a deeper, more effective treatment. Mm. 
Okay. And when you're, what's the kind of, um, like the action that you're actually doing with the device? Is it kind of like a stamping thing where then you're- It is like a stamping. It just basically, the surface is clean and flat and the device sits on it. And then we do usually a 50% overlap to just get that extra. I think you can do like 10 to 20%, but we've been doing 50% to just get that extra yummy out of the tip. Okay, cool. And so when we talk about the devices like this, when we talk about dermal remodeling, what exactly does that actually mean? So dermal remodeling is when you're remodeling the skin on a dermal level. You're not just treating the epidermis. You're treating the new skin as it basically develops and grows. So you're changing the skin on a cellular level. So when we do this treatment, we incorporate topicals and with it, we create incorporate my own bespoke topical that we've created, which includes salicylic, retinol, vitamin C. We incorporate all of that so that it penetrates down into the channels. So it's going to help to reverse the damage on the epidermis. But the device itself is what's penetrating into the dermis and breaking down those damaged cells, breaking down the damaged tissue and changing the way the body responds and the way the cells heal in response to that energy. So you're actually changing the dermis. So dermal remodeling is a great way to just say, like you're changing the skin on a cellular level. You're changing the way that the radio frequency um, penetrates the skin the way that the collagen is distributed the lift that you have the density of the skin mm. that makes sense so, so yeah no so so when you're applying your topicals would you do it beforehand um kind of like in a sort of mesotherapy action or would you then you put your topicals on after when the kind of channels are open we do both so we do a topical beforehand so that way we're basically penetrating it down into the skin but with a device like this where the needles go down into the skin and then come out again, these needles are 24 karat gold coated so they cannot like hold on to any bacteria, which is incredible, especially if you're going over acne or anything like that. But if I'm using a topical, they can get a little bit sticky, which you wouldn't want to do because that could interfere with the energy and the needle itself. So we'll apply a topical, remove it so there's just a tiny bit of residue carry out the treatment with the radio frequency and the needling and then apply a topical that will penetrate down into the channels. Mm, okay. Cool. Now, when we're doing that, obviously, I mean, when you're talking about insurance and everything, it's not something that the device itself is insured to do. The device itself is simply insured to do the microneedling with the radio frequency. So you do have to make sure your insurance knows what you're using, how you're using it, and you are insured to topically introduce that product. Yeah. But as long as you're insured to do injectables, you're, you, your insurance will cover it, but you do have to let them know. So this is, it's not just a, oh, if I have the secret, I can follow this protocol. It is something that's unique and you have to approach it that way. Yeah, and it, with anything like this, it is always best to check, isn't it? And just make sure that- um, Make sure insurance. they know what you're doing. Yeah. Because if you say, oh, I have the secret and now I'm insured to do the secret, you aren't necessarily insured to do a totally different protocol with the secret. You're insured to do the protocol that the secret is carried out to do, which is simply the device treatment and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it is something to bear in mind. Yeah. And actually, so, so talking about protocols, do you, I mean, for how long have you been using the device so far? So I have been, well, okay. I used something similar a while back, about six months ago, and didn't really see any results, but was really interested in the technology. And then looked at purchasing a competitor, found the secret in February, played with it a little bit in February and in March, absolutely loved it, started to see the results from it. And then of course, we just took delivery on ours at the end of May, June, beginning of June. I'm not positive on the dates. So literally all my staff have had it. Everyone's been playing with it. All of my models have had it just like training treatments because we are still in a weird lockdown state. Yeah, yeah. But I'm seeing incredible results. And on my own skin, I let everyone practice on me, like my entire staff. And my makeup artist saw me, she's been doing my makeup for almost six years before we did a filming for ITV for The Secret. And she was like, oh my God, what have you done to your face? Like your skin is best I've ever seen it in years and years. So it does make a big difference pretty quickly. It's not one of those that you have to wait months to see a difference. This was about a week later, she saw me beforehand. So you can constantly see improvements for up to three months afterwards.
Mm. And what kind of improvements have you been seeing, like maybe on your own skin and with some, um, with some patients? Has, has there been any kind of specific results that you've really noticed on people from this? So an improvement in that crepey skin almost immediately, especially on me in this area. I have a disorder that causes my body to destroy my elastin, like it literally just destroys it. So I had all of this crepiness from the time I was about 35. So it changed that almost immediately. And then the type tightness in the jaw is almost instant as well because it's putting the radio frequency down into that tissue and causing that instant like tightness and lift but it's not like the other radio frequencies that I've used topically where then it kind of relaxes out I mean at this point this was two and a half weeks ago and nothing's relaxed it's just continued to get tighter every day and then almost an instant skin glow almost instant like the next day I was glowy and people were saying oh what have you done yeah. so that's pretty cool yeah. yeah. And what about a course of treatment? So like how many would you normally recommend? Does it depend on the indication that you're treating? Like what, what's the kind of course normally like? Is it ever a one-off treatment? So in my clinic, yes. Qterra normally recommend for best results, you have a treatment of three to four, carried out four to six weeks apart. The way that I work in my clinic is we don't recommend straight courses. We talk to the patient. We say, given that this is your indication, this is what we would recommend, but you don't purchase a course up front because your skin is gonna change from each treatment. So you could say, I mean, if someone came in and they were 65 years old and they didn't wanna do any injectables and they had laxity and fine lines and wrinkles, obviously we're gonna say, you're probably going to need four to get the best, I mean, that's gonna be the best results. You're not gonna be happy at three, you're 65 years old, let's do four, carry them out once a month. But for someone who's in their 30s, you may incorporate it in with other topical radio frequencies afterwards. If they're really worried about scarring or pigmentation, we might do two of the secret and then incorporate some topical aura for some skin pen. It honestly is bespoke to the patient is how we approach it. And that's the thing with courses of treatments as well, isn't it? It's interesting about everyone talks about providing um, like bespoke and tailored treatments, but if you're selling someone a course of the exact same thing, it's not they bespoke and tailored. Exactly. Because yeah. So when people are like, oh, but do you think I should have a course? We're like, well, we, you may have an amazing response to one treatment and then come in and we go, actually, you're completely lifted. You look great. You've got a little bit more enlarged pores here. So let's go ahead and use a nanofractional radio frequency or a skin pen or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like we've actually gotten a really great result with this treatment. So we can use something else to get a more bespoke approach to this small area that needs more improvement. Yeah, no, exactly. That's how we work. And yeah. that, I mean, I feel like that's the most honest, efficacious way to work to get patients the results that they want, because yeah. it's not then about selling a course. It's not about, it's not approaching it from a business point of view. It's approaching it from a medical point of view and what is based for, best for this patient. Yeah. And the point of view of actually helping that patient's skin. Exactly. Um, okay. So what about contraindications or any... What's downtime like? What's aftercare like? Um, I know that's going to be our protocol. We're, we're using the LED light immediately afterwards, and we already always put the patient in the body balancer at the same time as well. They usually have no redness when they walk out the door, even at a 3.5 millimeter depth. For me, I was not in the body balancer and I did not have the LED afterwards because it wasn't with us. We were doing a training and I was red for about two to three hours in my cheeks and a little bit in my jaw and my neck. At four to five hours when I went home, no one knew anything to happen. So it's not much downtime at all. And compared to competitive devices, which I've had on myself, it was like, a week of downtime where I was red and blotchy and my face was peely. I didn't see the result that I had with this treatment and I had seven times the downtime. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you don't have the downtime, and I strongly believe that that's mostly because of the 24 karat gold plated needles because basically when you use a standard needle, you have some inflammation, the body doesn't like metal going into it, but 24 karat gold, it doesn't cause inflammation. There is no irritation from the needle itself. And I feel that that's why you don't have as much redness as you do with competitors, because it doesn't really make that much sense 
when you look at the studies, because they're very, very similar, all of these devices that do the microneedling with the radio frequency, when you look at the studies and clinical studies on how the device power is powered and how it delivers the energy to the patient, having two hours of downtime versus seven days of downtime isn't logical. But when you look at using the gold needle and the fact that gold doesn't cause irritation and it drastically reduces inflammation, I think that's where we're seeing the difference and why this device is superior to some others out there. Mm. And is anyone particularly contraindicated to having both these technologies delivered at the same time or are you, would the contraindications, would this be the same as, you know, would that be the same as any other radio frequency or microneedling? If someone's particularly prone to keloids, we aren't going to microneedle them. If someone has a pacemaker, we aren't going to use radio frequency on them. If someone is pregnant, we're usually not going to use either of the energies on them. So it just depends on the patient, but this device itself doesn't make them any more contraindicated than they would be to any other device in clinic. Yeah, okay. Cool. I mean, they're relatively a low, small list of contraindications. Okay. Um, and then just thinking about skincare, is there any, say that most of, most of the patients coming for you perhaps are coming for that kind of lifting and tightening um, with this device around the jawline in the neck area. Is there any specific skincare ingredient that you would recommend to prolong the results of the treatment? Of course, I put all my patients on retinol. I like to use retinols that are blended with other ingredients. So whether that is a retinol that's blended with AHAs or a retinol that's blended with peptides and antioxidants, I don't yet like to use a straight medically prescribed retinol. I like to use a retinol that's going to benefit the skin in multiple ways because it's also going to reduce irritation and downtime. Yeah, absolutely. So they do, um, they come off of their retinols and their acids for five days afterwards while the skin recovers. And then after five days, I put them right back onto all of their regularly scheduled skincare products and they can exfoliate seven days after the treatment and then proceed completely as normal. Obviously SPF, but that's whether you've had treatment or not. Yeah, that's about saying. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna, um, we've got a few before and after images. And these are not um, Renee's or from Renee's clinic, but if you maybe can just tell us, Renee, kind of talk us through a little bit about what changes we're seeing. Yeah. So I am going to attempt to share my screen. So I should be able to just. Okay. Beautiful. So you can see not only is she much firmer in the jawline and in the neck, like that little jowl pocket that she has underneath in this area is completely gone and lifted, but also her lines are completely smoothed out. She's got a little bit of textural issues under the lip, but that's more ice pick that looks like old acne scarring. But her lines are much smoother. Her smoother's lines throughout around her mouth are smoother. Her pore size on her nose is much better. And her skin overall, the texture and the tone is much prettier. And you can see that the skin is more spongy. And that's only two treatments. So this woman probably, if she came in after the results from the second treatment, I would say, let's do one or two more. Yeah. Um, because look at these incredible results you have from two. Let's see what we can get with three. But yeah. it's, a good, it's a good indication of how you can tighten that lax skin here and also lift that little pocket because a lot of women are concerned about this and they're basically, I have a lot of patients that are, they consider Botox and filler to be invasive treatments, which I think is a little bit, ridiculous, but they do. But they also, you know, threads are great for this, but if they're scared of Botox and filler, they're certainly not going to have threads. Yeah. So it's a great treatment to have in clinic with very little downtime that's going to actually reverse that without having to have Botox filler, any sort of injectables. Mm. Let's have a little flick through if anything else. Because this, so you can see the staining and the pigmentation. This has massively lifted the pigmentation staining, and it's also improved the mild rosacea and the flushing in the cheek, as well as improved the pore size. And that's just one treatment. Yeah, that's just one. 
crazy. I know we have a lot here, so I might just flick through and if there's yeah. any. This, this is really, this is a big concern, the neck here. And like on this patient, we would have done slimming mesotherapy as well a week before so that she would have lost more of the fat pocket that she has in this area. Um, because that's just a way that you can combine things in. But I mean, the woman, she just looks 10 years younger in her neck. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is just another, this is three, exactly. Like I said before, if you had a patient who was 65, you would do three to four treatments. Yeah, yeah. And that's the depth of those um, nosolabial folds has been oh, massive. massive. Yeah. Um, I know. Ice massive. pick scarring. Um, a little bit of boxcar scarring, but mostly ice pick, massively reduced. The pore size has greatly reduced the visibility of the pores. Mm -hmm. Now this one I really like because this is what a lot of my patients come in with. They have relaxing through the jaw, they have nasolabial lines, they're starting to feel a bit of heaviness where the cheek, the fat pad on the cheek is beginning to descend. And you can see not only has it smoothed out her nasolabial lines, it's lifted her jawline. And by lifting the chin, it supported her lip. Normally you would need to put filler into that chin to support that lip. By increasing the density of the collagen, it supported her lips so she doesn't need injectables. And it's lifted the fat pad in the cheek so that it's not sitting so heavily on the lower face. So one treatment, she is in her mid to late 30s and you've completely changed her face with minimal downtime, minimal pain. Yeah. And no bruising whatsoever, which you couldn't achieve this result without bruising. I mean, to look at her, you would normally think, okay, four to six syringes of filler. That's what you would think, like off the top of your head, if you walked into a skin show and saw this hanging on the wall. But no, it's just one treatment, but it's completely lifted and changed her skin. Mm. Impressive. Look at this lady. I love this lady. It's four weeks after one treatment. Isn't that crazy? Like her whole jawline is lifted, her nasolabial fold, her fat pad is lifted on her face, her fine lines are greatly reduced. And of course, her eyes look less hollow. Uh huh. Because it's boosted that collagen production around the eye. And it's evened up the pigmentation as well. Mm. Yeah, definitely. This is a typical post two treatment. It's lifted that fat pad back up, reduced that nasal, nasal labial fold, lifted the jawline, smoothed out around the eyes, improved the texture. Yeah, I think and that's our starting patient. Yeah, so yeah, amazing results. Um, I think we have got some questions that I'm going to... Yeah, ask. it looks like there's some chat questions at the bottom. Yeah, so there's, um, there's kind of two different bits here. So we've had a... Because we're streaming to Facebook as well, so we've had a few questions come through from Facebook. Um, okay, so someone has said, there seem to be a lot of radio frequency devices on the market. Is there much variation um, between them regarding settings and effectiveness? Um, and what do you recommend to look out for for professional use? So I guess like if someone is choosing to invest in a radio frequency device, what should they really make sure they're, they're choosing? Are they meaning just straight radio frequency or radio frequency think, and healing? Yeah, I think in this case, just straight radio frequency. So if we're talking straight radio frequency, you want to look for basically the ease of use. You don't want to have to manually check the temperature. You want the device to check the temperature for you. And you also want the device to check the power as well, to adjust the power so that you're not manually changing settings. And you also want to look at the depth of treatment. If you're trying to treat face and body, you want to make sure that you're treating at a deep enough depth to address not only skin laxity, but also cellulite, um, reduced circumference, so circumferential reduction with um, fat, and also look at the areas of the body it can be used on if you're trying to treat face and body. Okay, cool. Um, Which is a good point I haven't made about the Kutera secret. You can use it on the entire body. Yeah, I was so a friend of mine is really worried about this little crepey bit here, like right above the knee, like that area. And she had threads and like, she's just not thrilled. So in a couple weeks, I think actually next week, we're going to do a full thing from the middle of her knee all the way up onto her thigh and see what happens because we can treat the whole entire body with it. 
which is cool. I'll be putting those before and afters on my Instagram when we get them. Yeah. Um, so someone has asked, are the needles insulated and which anesthetic do you use? And you don't, do you numb every patient with this? I don't numb every patient. It depends on the age of the patient as well as the patient's pain threshold and what we're treating. If we're not going very deep, I don't numb them. Um, and also like you can go two millimeters deep and not need numbing because you're actually putting the radio frequency deeper in the skin. So I almost feel like it's more uncomfortable when you go 0.5. Uh, we use LMX4. As far as insulated and not insulated, we have both. So you can pick, so obviously the capsule is disposable, which contains the needles and it contains up to 1500 shots, but you have insulated needles that you're going to use on patients that are Fitzpatrick's four, five, six, and also on the patients who are more reactive. You have non-insulated needles, which means, Georgia, that you're putting the energy from the very tip of the surface all the way down inside the skin. You're putting that radio frequency in. With an insulated needle, it means that the radio frequency is only delivering at the end of the needle. So if you're treating at 3.5, you'd be putting the radio frequency 3.5 in. When you use a non-insulated needle, you're putting the radio frequency from the surface of the skin all the way down. So you're creating a full chamber of energy. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with non-insulated, you're going to be putting more heat and more radio frequency into the skin, which can of course cause more of a pigmentation response in someone who's darker. So you're going to use a semi-insulated needle in stronger Fitzpatrick's. And then on the body, we have a 64 chamber, which is semi-insulated as well. Okay, cool. So it's another way that you can kind of customize and you can... Exactly. Because you're going to pick the needle head for them. So based on their indication, what you're trying to treat, as well as their skin response, you know, okay, which one should I pick? And obviously the non-insulated is the stronger treatment. I actually had semi-insulated and I've had incredible results. I clearly could have taken a non-insulated on the color of milk. Like there's no problems. But I wanted to see some on my next one, I'm going to use the non-insulated and see how much greater of a result we have. Mm. Okay. Um, so someone's asked particularly about acne scarring, what um, kind of protocol, what would your approach be to someone if you were specifically looking at that indication with um, the secret RF device, like how many treatments, what kind of protocol? It would depend on the acne scarring itself, whether it was ice pick, boxcar, rolling, whether it was raised. Um, we would probably say a minimum of two treatments. We may not only use the secret, we may use other devices in our clinic as well. Like I was saying earlier, if someone had heavy thickened scarring, we might use a skin pen alongside the secret to basically help to further deeper break that scarring up and then get the radio frequency down inside so that we're stimulating more of a collagen response. So it's honestly going to depend on what the scarring looks like. But if it's traditional ice pick scarring, a couple of little box car scarrings, you'd probably need about three treatments mm -hmm. and you'd want to treat about two millimeters deep and then basically vary, do two to three passes and raise the needle depth each time. Okay. Um, the same person has also asked with, so can you just talk a little bit through the training um, that, that Qterra offers with this device? Okay, Qterra had the best training I've ever had with any company ever. I used to work as a trainer for a competing company, so I know how training goes. When I first moved to the UK, like that's how I got back into the industry here. And I was so blown away by their training. They're incredibly supportive. The trainer is fully prepared to stay all day to crawl around on the floor and plug the device in if she needs you to, to explain to, I have a therapist who's brand new to devices who won't be working with the secret, but who still wanted to be trained on it to possibly use it on the body. And she explained it in a way that she completely understood everything, was super passionate about it. And then she explained it to my therapist with 15 years of experience who's worked with every single device under the sun, medically trained. And she completely got it. And at no point was anyone bored. 
-hmm. at no point was anyone like, oh, she's explaining it basically, so I'm going to check out. She made it really exciting. All of the online support is incredible. The marketing support is tailored to you, so you don't just go online and download like a pre-done PDF, which a lot of companies have. They actually will take and put your logo on it for you and make it unique to you, which is really helpful because I don't know about most of the clinics out there, but my manager has online skills, but that's not her strongest skill set. I cannot put a PDF and take my logo and put it onto a PDF. Like I can't do that. I'm sorry. I can completely get rid of your scarring and give you a whole new jawline and, you know, put your eyebrows back up into the middle of your forehead, but I cannot put my logo onto a PDF. So it's really great that they support you like that and they give you this training and you get ongoing free trainings. So she's actually, Taryn is the trainer who we have that we absolutely love and adore. And she's actually coming back after the 1st of August once everybody can treat faces hands on. She's going to come back about a week later and see what questions do you guys have? What have you encountered that you want more clarity on? Like let's do another hands on session. So it's really cool that we've had had that behind us because now all the girls are super passionate about our Qterra machines and they're dying to be able to get on and start using them. Well, it's like you said, it's about so much more than just the practical actual like hands-on training now, isn't it? Like you need the support with marketing as well. I think it's such a massive part of it. Um, but you also need a trainer that can explain it to all levels because yeah. you aren't just training one person. So for her to be able to explain it to someone who's brand new to machines and then explain it to someone who's used every single radio frequency machine out there is like, yeah. it's really exciting. Yeah, definitely. Okay, clear. just a few more questions. Hmm. Um, sorry, I'm just having a little scroll. Okay. Um, so can you, so someone has asked, are there any independent clinical trials, which we kind of, you mentioned a little bit, um, to support the long-term effects on the skin? Primarily I think therapy. Qterra would be best to send them that. So yeah, definitely connect yeah. them to Qterra. Yeah. Um, so this person's kind of just thinking about whether or not there's any um, subdermal damage that will present in years ahead. So I will drop... Um, uh, I know the answer to that is no, there is not, but Qterra can send them the yeah. study. Um, and links of the studies. Um, okay. So... Someone's asking about um, treating stretch marks on the body. Would you recommend using RF? Amazing. It is incredible for stretch marks on the body. I wish I had one of my little flip books in here because you see a massive difference in one treatment, which we've been doing a lot the last couple of weeks. And people are like, a week later, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't even see my stretch marks anymore. Now that's not logical. There is still some damage there, but compared to what they had beforehand, there's a massive change because it puts that energy down inside the stretch marks and the needles ablate the scar tissue which is what the stretch mark is it ablates the dead tissue and then the radio frequency stimulates new healthy tissue development underneath so it's actually changing the scar from the outside inside approaching it with a 360 approach mm -hmm. so yeah huge on stretch marks which is why my therapist with minimal machine experience was wanting to use it was for the body yeah so what parameters would you use for stretch marks and would that change depending on which area of the body you're treating it would 100 percent change on which area of the body you're treating um if someone is very thin like they had stretch marks in the backs of their arms or on the insides of their breasts you would go more shallow because there's not as much fat there it would just depend on the patients and obviously the more energy the better but you can't put too much energy in too shallow as it would cause too much heat but again that's where Taryn's amazing and comes in and trains you so you know all the parameters yeah okay and just finally someone's asked whether you would prepare whether you could prepare the skin before treatment with retinol um is it necessary to have to start patients perhaps on retinol before you would do this treatment if they weren't on it before Oh, definitely not. No, not at all. You can, I would always recommend retinol when you're doing something like this because you're changing the skin on a cellular level. So you want to continue to treat those cells so that you get the best tissue possible. And obviously we know that retinol heals the nucleus of the cell. So it makes sense if you're going to invest in these kind of treatments to be on retinol at home, but they don't need to be on retinol beforehand. Absolutely not. Okay, cool. Well, I think though that's probably all our questions. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do is just, um, I'm going to just drop in a little link um, 
to the, the Secret RF page on Kutara's website. Um, and there's also contact information on here that if anyone does want to get in touch and just ask about um, any studies or wants more information on the device for themselves, then hopefully you will all be able to see this now. Um, well, thank you so much, Renee. Thank you. It was fun to chat. Thank you for joining us. And um, thank you everyone else for attending. If anyone's missed it, I know someone's just popped in a question. Um, this is streaming live to both the Aesthetic Medicine and the Professional Beauty Facebook pages and it will stay on there so you can rewatch. Um, so yeah, thanks so much, Renee. We will chat soon. Thank um, you. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.